Hello and thank you for joining me once again on Diary of a Common Man. My name is Salim Lalani. This week we will begin the journey or exploration into the secret world of Aga Khan. Aga Khan is known for many reasons. One of them is his multiple mysterious and ambiguous identities. In public, he is a Shia Imam and a descendant of the Prophet of Islam. Behind closed doors, however, he is God. Not only the God of Islam, but the Hindu gods Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh. In this podcast, we will begin by clearing some smoke around his identity as the Prophet of Islam. Ismaili constitution is a public document and a copy can be downloaded from the below link. In his preamble, Aga Khan identifies himself as Molana Hazar Imam Shah Karim al His Highness Prince Karim Aga Khan in direct lineal descent from Holy Prophet through Molana Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Bibi Fatima is the 49th Imam of the Ismaili Muslims. In short, descendant of the Prophet via Shia Imam Ali. Ambiguity starts right here. To unravel it, first we'll need to understand the relationship between the Prophet Imam Ali and Bibi Fatima. And we'll also need to understand Imam Ali and the progeny. To do this, we'll have to go to Arabia 1400 years ago. This is Mecca. It is now 571 years since Jesus Christ was crucified in Jerusalem. 1500 kilometers south in the city of Mecca, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam is born. According to Muslims, he spreads the final message of God. At age 40, he begins his mission. He receives divine messages for the rest of his life. And those messages, those divine messages are compiled in a book that we know as Quran. Although the Prophet had many, many relatives, but he only approved five family members from religious point of view. Muhammad, the Prophet himself, Fatima, Prophet's daughter and Ali's wife, Ali, Prophet's cousin and son-in-law, Hassan, Ali and Fatima's eldest son and Hussein, Ali and Fatima's younger son. After spreading the divine message for 19 years, the Prophet eventually passed away in 632 years after death. As his legacy, he left behind the Quran and his own tradition. His absence, however, created a massive leadership vacuum. Who could possibly fill his shoes? After a few rounds of deliberations and negotiations, the Ummah, the Muslim community in Mecca, they chose Abu Bakr Siddiqui as Prophet's successor. Abu Bakr would be a successor, but not the Prophet. Prophet had authority over Muslims, not only from the secular viewpoint, but from the religious viewpoint as well. Abu Bakr would only guide people from the secular point of view. In fact, him and his followers would rely on the Quran and the tradition of the Prophet to be guided on the right path. All was well so far, but then a minority Muslims rejected Abu Bakr's appointment as a caliph. They believed the Prophet had actually nominated Ali, his cousin and son-in-law, as his successor. Not only that, Ali had the authority over Muslims 
not only from secular point of view but from religious point of view as well not only that ali and his progeny would be present physically to guide people until the end of time they would guide people according to the message of islam the the exoteric message and the esoteric message people who subscribed the minority muslims who subscribed to this doctrine they are known as shia muslims their party was called shiatun ali or shia muslims but the majority of the muslims accepted abu bakr's appointment as caliph of islam let's quickly summarize imam ali is prophet's cousin and son in law upon prophet's death muslim community splits between shia and sunni muslims shia muslims believe a divine authority that is an imam is required to guide people according to the meaning correct meaning of the quran not only the exoteric but the esoteric meaning of the quran the, this divine authority is personified by imam ali and his progeny in the ismaili constitution what aga khan is saying is he is the progeny of imam ali the divine guide and hence he is the divine guide as well now imagine a chain with a pendant pendant is the prophet and the chain has 49 links imam ali is the first link and aga khan is the 49th link aga khan advocates the idea that this chain of 49 links to which the pendant the prophet is attached is this chain is actually unbroken and hence he is directly related to the prophet but recorded history does not agree in fact it has a major disagreement with aga khan's claim it suggests a chain of 49 imams does not exist only five imams the first five imams on aga khan's list are linked to the prophet let's substantiate this 29 years after the prophet passed away imam ali was assassinated in kufa as per the shia doctrine his elder son hasan takes over as the imam but for some reason he doesn't appear on aga khan's list imam hussein imam hasan's youngest brother takes over as the next imam but unfortunately he is killed under very tragic circumstances his very young son imam hussein's very young son zainul abidin takes over as the next imam and then his son mohammad bakir takes over as the next imam and then his son imam jafar sadiq takes over as the next imam this is where aga khan's unbroken chain actually breaks because imam jafar's son the designated successor imam ismail is missing the year is 765 after death imam jafar sadiq is poisoned to death just like his ancestors but his death creates a few issues first of all the shia community splits in two parts and secondly his designated successor ismail is missing so what is the problem if his designated successor ismail is missing here is the problem the problem is that the shia doctrine asserts that an imam is a divine guide who is always present physically in this world to guide people according to the quran but ismail is missing if he is missing or hiding or what have you or or, or is dead how is he going to guide people and if he is if he is not going to guide people how could he be an imam that is a problem now some say he was hiding some say sunni caliphs killed him way before imam jafar's death but the fact of the matter is 
Imam Ismail never appeared in public after Imam Jafar's death. Aga Khan found an institute of Ismaili studies in 1977 to research Islam and Ismailism. So far, they have not been able to find one piece of evidence to put Imam Ismail on the scene. Because Imam Ismail is not a part of the 49 links, he is a missing link. This is the reason why we will infer that Aga Khan could not be related to the Prophet of Islam. Now back to Medina in 765, Imam Jafar is dead, Imam Ismail is missing. Those people who believe that Imam Ismail was in hiding and he, he was indeed an Imam, these people, this minority uh, came to be known as Ismailis, today we know them as Aga Khanis. But the majority of the Shia Muslims maintain that Imam Ismail never turned up and hence they, they basically uh, accepted Imam Ismail's younger brother Musa Kazim as the next Imam. He was present on the scene, so they accepted him. Musa, uh, Imam Musa's followers are known as Ishnasharis or the Twelvers. Now, Shia community splitting between Ismailis and Ishnasharis was not good news for Ismailis because they now became a minority within a minority. Shia Muslims were already a minority and now Ismailis were a minority within Shia community. So now they were hounded by the Sunni Muslims and the Shia Muslims alike. In fact, everybody wanted them uh, exterminated because their ideology was heretic and they just wanted them out. So they were persecuted to the point that Ismailis had to go underground. They remained underground for 144 years and during this time many Imams on Aga Khan's list are unknown in the sense that recorded history doesn't know much about them whether they lived or whether they died or whether they existed. These Imams are Imam Ismail, Imam Muhammad bin Ismail, Imam Wafi Ahmad, Imam Taki Muhammad and Imam Radhe Din Abdullah. Now, we just inferred that the Aga Khan could not be the descendant of the Prophet. So who were his ancestors? To find the answer, we will need to travel to Iran via North Africa. This is Cairo in Egypt. And this is 11th century. Ismaili Imam of the time is Imam Mustansir, 18th Imam on Aga Khan's list. Now, some believe that due to political reasons after Imam Mustansir, his caliphate and his office of Imama passed on to his younger son. Musta Ali instead of the designated successor Imam Nizar. Now Nizar revolted against the younger brother for his right but unfortunately he was overpowered and he was given a very slow painful death. Nizar's son and successor Al Hadi was now hounded by the Mustalians and by the Ishnasharis and by the Sunni Muslims. So Al Hadi and his followers had no choice but to go underground. They remained underground. In fact, the descendants of Imam Nizar were never found. They never surfaced again. 
Al Hadi basically appears on Aga Khan's list as the 20th Imam. During the crisis of succession between Nizar and his younger brother Musta Ali, in those times Hassan bin Sabah was an Ismaili missionary and he was also a military commander of the Shia Imam Mustansir. And he was a strong supporter of, of Nizar's. Now, when Imam Nizar was basically imprisoned, Hassan was also imprisoned at the same time. But they say Hassan escaped and made his way to Iran. In Iran, he basically captured a fortress in Almud in the region of Alborz Mountains. And in this fortress, he basically established a Nizari settlement for the followers of Imam Nizar. Now, he firmly believed that Al Hadi, who was Imam Nizar's uh, son and the successor, would one day arrive in Iran and he would become the Imam and he would guide them. But unfortunately, Imam Hadi never arrived. Anthony Campbell is the author of a famous book, The Assassins of Almut. He writes, until the end of his long life, Hassan, that is Hassan bin Sabah, remained in Almut, a lonely and a severe figure, administering his strange realm, ordering assassinations, thinking, writing, planning, and waiting. For what? Did he believe that the son of dead Nizar Al Hadi would one day appear to him to claim the Imamat? If so, how was he to be recognized as genuine? Nizaris agree that Al Hadi never made it to Almut, but they say he was actually in hiding. This presumption, however, did not find any credibility because there was no need for Al Hadi to hide. Hassan bin Sabah had already established a strong foundation at the fort of Almut. Anyway, Hassan died in 1124 after death without meeting Al Hadi. Let us quickly summarize. Aga Khan claims direct lineal descent from the Prophet via Shia Imam Ali as an unbroken chain of 49 Imams. So far we have learned 8 Imams lived and died in hiding, 6th Imam Ismail disappears after the death of Imam Jafar. This even breaks Aga Khan's unbroken chain separating him from the Prophet. Then again in Cairo in 1097, Imam Nizar, the 19th Imam on Aga Khan's list becomes the last Ismaili Imam as his descendants are never found. Next week, we will go to Almut in Iran to find the real ancestors of Aga Khan. In the meanwhile, take care of yourself and goodbye.